Now you guys keep tagging me in this particular image. It really got me thinking. So I did some research to find out exactly why they grow the fruit in one part of the world and ship it all the way to the other side of the world to package it. So let's dive in and once and for all answer this truly mind boggling question. Well, first let's start talking about what times of year you eat fruit. And I'm sure if you eat fruit, the answer is all year round. But if you're like me, British, in the middles of winter, we live on a fruitless island, cursed by mother nature. Fruit in winter? Nah, bruv. When you saw that picture, straight away your brain went WTF. And then you went, let's tag Lord K. Which I appreciate. But it left me as confused as you. But let me tell you what I've learned about this particular pear odyssey. What in the world would drive supposedly sensible Argentina pear growers to embark on a quest that spans continents, oceans, and plastic containers. It's like a near complete circumnavigation of the planet, all for the sake of fruit. But it turns out there is a method to this madness. A tale of economic theory emerges. And I won't bore you with all the graphs and equations I had to read, because trust me, it is more enjoyable to watch paint dry. So to start, we need to dive into the pear supply chain because we're all wondering why it is more cost effective, apparently, to ship pears across the ocean than to just grow and pack them locally. But to understand this, we first need to explore the art of growing a pear. You see, pears can be grown in the winter. Well, in the cold anyway. Even in Sweden, they can grow pears. And some clever souls have managed to cultivate their own pear trees. But these trees do not perform all year round. They just have their star moments. And then they bid them full well. Kinda like this guy. Gave us one song, never saw him again. Now, let's talk about Argentina. Argentina, good weather all year round. But so do some parts of America. So why are the Argentina pears stealing the spotlight from the American pears? You see, Argentina is literally designed to grow pears. They have huge pear farms. They have children born and grown to produce pears. They know everything there is to know about making a good pear. Whereas America, I mean, they're just too busy with Donald Trump and other Quack. It's just far more important to them to produce the next iPhone than it is to make a juicy, good tasting pear. But also, why would we want them made in America when there's Argentina? I mean, think about it. Do you want your car fixed by a garage with years of experience, all the tools and all the knowledge? Or your mate Dave, who's got a couple of spanners and watched a YouTube video? You want it done by the people who know how to do it. The people that really have the tools for the job. It's like picking between a jack of all trades and a master of one. The latter wins every time. But there is more to this story. And we're gonna take a detour to the busting lands of Thailand. But why this exotic pick stop? Well, it's important to know that these pears aren't just pears. They're a the tangy twist. They're chopped and soaked in lemon flavored syrup. And these pears are commonly eaten in Southeast Asia in a dish that I really can't pronounce. What's that? Rujak? Rujak? Rujak. Which is some type of fruity ensemble that's popular across Malaysia and Indonesia. And here's the real kicker. Those syrup-soaked pears don't need a fancy fridge to chill in. This culinary innovation is a game changer for developing nations like Indonesia, where they're too poor to have refrigerators. Unlike the Americans. Now you're probably thinking, if this is all the case, why don't they just hop on a flight from Indonesia to Argentina? But they can't, because they're picked before they're even fully ripe, embarking on this voyage of refrigeration ripening. And by the time they reach Southeast Asia, they're ready to shine. And now we know why they're grown in Argentina, how they manage to stay fresh while traveling halfway across the world, and how they're used and packed when they get there. But what we really need to get into is the world of demand and supply. Now, Americans, they may not really be into this stuff. What's it called? Rujak, Rujak, Rujak. But there still is a niche craving out there for these syrupy pears. I've seen them here in England. And that's where these American supermarkets and English enter the scene with a dual choice. Build a local packing plant and pack American pears or hop onto the tire train for pre-packed perfection. And what's my verdict? Well, let's just say that efficiency and economics make for quite the partnership. While the urge to pack locally might seem tempting and make more sense to us, it turns out that the streamlined process in Thailand ends up being the smarter option. Economics, my friends, has a knack for making the wise decisions seem absolutely logical. 
So let's quickly talk about the shipping. One container can hold an astonishing 135,000 pairs. And shipping them from Asia to North America costs a mere $2,500. That's less than two cents per pair. And for us English people, how much is that? Well, let's just say more. We're all getting wrapped with today's exchange rates and inflation costs. But this video ain't really about us. So to summarize, Argentina make the pairs. They ship the pairs to Thailand. Thailand will then pack them pairs in that syrupy stuff and ship it to places local to them. But America want a piece of that stuff, as do we here in Britain. So they send a little back our way. And for us and the Americans, it wouldn't be worth us manufacturing that stuff ourselves because of the small demand. And let's quickly talk about the pears that aren't shipped over to Thailand. Well, they've not got syrupy stuff added to them. They're just pears. Plain old <laughs> pears. And they're sent all around Argentina and America. The same way you'd expect the pears to be grown in Thailand, but they're not. At the end of the day, everything comes down to money. If you can ship sank all the way around the world and then back to yourself cheaper than you can manufacture it at home, you're gonna do so. Economics, my friend, money. And I hope, I hope that answers your question. And guess what? Now you know. <laughs> Counter.